threat. So I really think that the Kentucky defense, which could be better than it was last year, is going to get a true test tonight. Two inexperienced quarterbacks in Mike Deaton and Gary Harper. They're hoping to find some respectability tonight. And of course, we mentioned it having the makings of a horse race, but in a horse race, you don't have defenders like Richard Jaffe out there trying to stop the horses from getting to the finish line. So really not too many people are predicting a high-scoring game here tonight. We'll be back to take a closer look at the teams in just one moment. If you've been waiting for the right time to buy a new car or truck, it's here. Your Ford dealer's Diamond Jubilee clearance sale, the sale you've waited all year for. All set to go now with the opening kickoff from Columbia, South Carolina. South Carolina has won the toss and elected to receive. Kentucky will be kicking from left to right on your screen with Tommy Griggs, the freshman from Lexington, Kentucky, from Tate's Creek High School there, kicking off. Back deep to receive for South Carolina. You're going to have George Rogers flanked by Spencer Clark and Johnny Wright. There's Tommy Griggs, who just uh, got to play tonight because of some uh, eligibility problems with the NCAA being straightened out at the last moment. They didn't think they were going to get to use Griggs, but he is here and kicking off. Number three, Tommy Griggs for Kentucky. The man back deep for South Carolina, George Rogers, ran the opening kickback 41 yards last week. It's going to him. Rogers at the three. Some pretty good running room still on his feet. Venus Mukes has to make a saving tackle for Kentucky at the 38-yard line. He took it at the two and returned it to the 38. Then I think they're going to spot that right where you said it, right on the 38. It was a fine run back from all the way to the three-yard line, 35-yard run back, and he just almost broke it all the way. And there goes number 10, Gary Harper, out to run the offense for South Carolina. Harper is a 6'175 sophomore from Hialeah, Florida. He was 5 for 8 in the passing department last week in the 45 to 10 opening victory. They start out in the I formation, shift out of it. Zion McKinney goes wide to the left side. And Harper faked the, uh, the bootleg there, gave it to George Rogers, his fullback, and Rogers has good running room up across the 40 to about the 45 yard line. We have a flagged Indian. I think we're going to have a penalty against South Carolina for illegal motion or offside. We, we, it does, here comes the play, and it does look like on the instant replay they got a big hole in there, but we have a a clip with a crack back block, and that's going to be a 15-yard penalty, and that's a big break for the Wildcats. So the great field position that South Carolina started off with is suddenly taken away from. It's still not bad field position. They'll start off now from the 23-yard line. This is Raymond Bayer, the referee, who is from the major independent conference of referees, and... This is the offensive line, Denny. You might set them up. Okay, they split in John Bailey. The tackles are Bill Lane and George Schechterly. The guards are Fred David and Tony Penny. Danny Clancy is the center. Harper now on first down and 25 after the penalty. That's George Rogers again going nowhere. We've got another penalty, and that's Butch Lambert. Spencer Clark on the carry, not Rogers. Uh, Clark is 35. Rogers is 38. Offsides on South Carolina, Denny. That's the second foul in a row that Butch Lambert has called. He's known as Mr. SEC. He's worked for 27 years in the Southeastern Conference and 13 bowl games. Pretty good credential. Well, instead of Florida, it was Kentucky offsides. Kentucky's offsides, so that gives us a second down now, or first down and 20. First and 20 up. with the ball in the 28-yard line. 14.45 to go in the first period. John Bailey out very wide to the left side. Again, they shift out of the eye. Spencer Clark running hard up the middle. That's, that's George Rogers it is. George Rogers on the carry. Number 38 across the 45 to the 47-yard line. Look at the hole, Tommy. That was a tremendous run as he came through that hole there, and he broke a big tackle on Johnny Bow, and then came right up there, right up to where it's almost first, second down, and about one yard for the South Carolina team. Willie Scott into the tight end now, as Zion McKinney goes wide to the right side. Rogers is the up back in the eye formation now, and Spencer Clark dots the eye. Up the middle for Rogers, across the midfield stripe, into Kentucky territory at the 49. Clearly a first down. Bob Winkle getting off the stack there along with Lester Boyd. 
There's Johnny Wright coming in. He uh, alternated last week with Spencer Clark at a tailback, and Wright was the leading rusher in the game last week against Furman. Jimmy Kovach coming back in there at the linebacking spot for Kentucky. Jimmy, they busted it up the middle on us instead of going wide like we thought they would at first. Johnny Wright, the back man on the eye as they shift out of it now. Willie Scott, the tight end, going to the right side. They pitch it back to Johnny Wright. Lester Boyd grabs him around the neck and brings him down with help from Venus Mukes, the quarterback. Let's set that defense for you for Kentucky. The Wildcats at the nose guard have Richard Jaffe, 58. The tackles are James Ramey and Bob Winkle. The defensive ends, 82 Stevens and 84 Bud Deal. The linebackers, right now we've got uh, Lester Boyd in there, 54. They started off with Kovach, 50, and Kirchbaum, 51. The defensive backs for Kentucky, you've got uh, Johnny Bow playing now, number 29, along uh, with a cornerback, Larry Carter, 24. Again, the shifting out of the eye formation on second and five. Up the middle they go to Johnny Wright, not much there. Kovac hit him with help inside from David Stevens. They closed the hole up well that time, Denny, and it's going to be third down at about four. And isn't it unusual that Venus Moe and sophomore that's starting over in place of Johnny Bowe? Greg Motley, number 31, enters the Kentucky lineup now, replacing Richie Boyd at the Wildcat position. Here's the first big possession play of the game. Third and three from the 42-yard line. Twelve and a half minutes to go, first period. Harper to throw. Good coverage by Hayden, but it was caught over there by Willie Scott, the tight end. At the 30-yard line, it's a Carolina first down. Willie Scott on the reception. They've got two of the very best tight ends in the country. Watch him catch this pass now. Kentucky man went up, but he held right on it. He just outfought Rick Hayden for the football. That's all you have to say about it. That there's a good play. Kentucky covered it well, but he just outfought it. Spencer Clark back in now at tailback, and Johnny Wright out for South Carolina. That's the second first down now, Denny, and they're on the 30. John Bailey wide to the left. Again, they shift out of the eye, and Cornette switches sides to the right on the tight end. Up the middle they go with Rogers to fullback to the 25-yard line, but flags are down. We've got a flag, and this is against Kentucky, it looks like, offside. They're going to take the penalty because he only made four yards on that play, so it'll be first down and five. George Rogers took the opening kickoff between the two and the three-yard line, returned it to the 38 as you look at Fran Kersey and the very worried Fran Kersey it is right now. And they have marched it down now to the 25. Well, we said this team was going to give Kentucky's defense the very toughest test, and right now they look like they might be a little bit better than the defense. Let's hope Kentucky's defense adjusts and gets back on the right track. And George Rogers is the up back in the eye formation for South Carolina. And again, they shift out of it. Harper, the quarterback, barking signal. That's Spencer Clark hit behind the line of scrimmage and drugged down by the nose guard, Richard Jaffe, who led Kentucky in tackling last year, Tommy. Boy, Jaffe speared right through there and made a terrific tackle. He hit him hard. There wasn't any doubt that he was going down. He made 10 tackles behind the line of scrimmage last year for 43 yards in losses. A very quick nose guard from Coral Gables, Florida, 5'11", 240-pound junior Richard Jaffe. Second and four now on the 24. 11 minutes and 29 seconds to play in a scoreless first period at Columbia, South Carolina. That's the quarterback keeper, Gary Harper, on the play. Kovac came up to meet him with plenty of help from his friends. He got almost four yards on that, so it's going to be very close. Uh, third down and less than a half a yard, it looks like, Denny. Lester was... Boyd, the other linebacker, helping out on the stop. Willie <laughs> Scott coming out now, and Ben Cornett. The other tight end come in, and they'll go with a two tight end offense now on the short yardage as they knock on the Kentucky door. The ball at the 21-yard line, third and one. 10.53 to go, first period. Harper has still got it. Pitches back to George Rogers. David Stevens cuts him off. And they get that yard right up to the 20-yard line. Let's it's, see where they spot it. It's going to be very close, Vinny. I think they're going to have to measure this one. Gary Harper made a good fake inside and pitched it back, and uh, it's very close. There's a good shot of the fullback, George Rogers, and he is a big one, 6'2", 200-pound sophomore from Duluth, Georgia. And they do have that speed that they refuse to have. Each one of them runs that 40-yard dash in less than about 4'5", and that's flying. They missed the first down by about one inch. 
So this is a big decision now for Coach Carlin. Shall he go for the field goal or will he go for that one inch? What do you say, Denny? Uh, Kentucky is sending Craig Roberts in defensively at an end spot. I would say Coach Carlin will go for it. By the way, he is 11-2 and two on his career in season openers. Kentucky has never lost a season opener under Fran Kersey. Well, we've got inches to go, and I think he's made up his mind. He didn't send the kicker in. They're going for it. There you see referee Ray Bauer showing you that it's less than six inches. The back split behind Gary Harper. Spencer Clark left. George Rogers to the right. John Bailey is on the wing to the right, and they're ready to go on fourth and one for the 20-yard line. Well, we'll just have to wait until they unstack. The whole center of that Kentucky line converging. And I do believe he had enough. It's going to be very close again uh, where they're spotting that football, Danny. And they'll have to measure it again. It'll be a matter of inches. Did he make it or didn't he make it? Well, the fans don't like where they spotted the football here in Carolina. Well, that would be natural, wouldn't you think? You know, if they didn't spot it up there where it was definitely a first down, it was looked like his head was there, but it's not where his head goes. It's just where that football is, and they never put that ball up there where you can see it real well. Let's That's list the officials for you. The referee is Ray Bauer. The umpire is Pete Williams. The lineman is Jim McGookin. The line judge is Bert Lambert. The field judge, Ed Stakem, and the back judge, Ted Thomas. I think you can see it on the instant replay. It's just a matter of where it's fighting. And they, and they barely made it by that one inch, so that's the third first down in this drive, Denny. Ten minutes and 11 seconds to go in the first period. The ball now on the 19-yard line. First and 10 Gamecocks. We've always said it's a game of inches, and it sure was on those last two plays. Willie Scott this time going wide to the right side. Spencer Clark trying to circle the end. Gets a nice hole. Gets around Ramey, and it's Lester Boyd who catches him around the ankles and brings him down with help from Larry Carter. Venus Mutes over there also. They really have terrific speed. That back really turned it on, and they're going to be tough for Kentucky's defense all night. Venus Mukes playing cornerback now. He and Johnny Bow will split that position. They've been fighting it out for the starting job in the preseason, and the uh, safety man for Kentucky is Rick Hayden, number 16. The monster, or wildcat, is Richie Boyd, 13. From the I formation now on second and five. That's George Rogers, the fullback. Look at him bully his way. He's got him a first down, Denny. Inside the 10 to almost the 8-yard line. They're going to spot it just short of the 9 now. All right, now, great defensive teams always say you, you get a first down inside the 10, you can't score on it. And let's see what this defensive team can Kentucky do because I think they have possibilities of being a great defensive team. They're going to really be put to the test early right now. There you see Kovach on the sidelines beside Coach Fran Percy. The linebackers for Kentucky now are 54 Lester Boyd and 51 Kelly Kirchbaum. They picked it up inside to Spencer Clark, and George Rogers hit behind the line by Greg Motley, the monster man, and he made a monster of a hit that time on Rogers. Greg not only knocked Rogers down, but he knocked the Ray, referee Ray Bauer down. You can see this on the play, and what a play he made here. It's a pitch out, and just as soon as he gets that pitch out, number 31 Motley hits him, and now watch the referee go down, too. He got two for one then. Greg Motley is a sophomore from Glasgow, Kentucky, six foot 178. That's a great play because that puts them second and 15, and that's the worst position they've had since that penalty of first and 25. Harper looking like he wants to throw. Aiming it over there for Zion McKinney. He's got it, and it is a legal catch at the eight-yard line. So they're getting back to uh, where it was originally spotted. Watch Harper this time. Now, he's been a question mark, but he wasn't anything but a super passer on that one. He hit McKinney right on the sideline and right out of bounds on the eight-yard line. Motley, the uh, monster man on the coverage again for Kentucky. So now it'll be third down and eight, or third down and goal to go from the eight. We hope that's saying that once you get a first down inside the 10, the great defensive team soon. I'll let you score, and now it's third and eight, and the defensive team is looking much better all the time. Willie Scott, their fine pass receiving tight end, is in on the left side. A full set of backs. And as McKinney went in motion, flags went down, throwing in the end zone. Good coverage over there by Rick Hayden, over the head of Zion McKinney, and we lots get, of hankies down. We've got Kentucky offsides. And that's really going to put the pressure on them because that's going to put it down third and three. As soon as they saw Zion McKinney go in motion, the Kentucky line jumped, Tommy. Yes, they did. 
That's a shame because I feel like they would have had them stop back there with third and eight, and the best, best that South Carolina could have come out with was a field goal, but it's going to be a five-yard Well, they're talking to Kovacs, which might mean that uh, there was illegal motion on the part of South Carolina. Let's see. That's the call. Oh, they got offsetting penalties because we had offsides on Kentucky, illegal motion on South Carolina. And there's the Wildcats. So that was a break. It's still third and eight. I saw the Butch, Butch Lambert signal offsides, but we didn't get the flag that had illegal motion on McKinney. But it says fourth and eight on the scoreboard, and that must be what it is because Eddie Leppard, the soccer-style kicker, is in to boot it. Steve Swinehart will hold right at the 15, so it'll be a 25-yard field goal. And he it's drilled good. It. South Carolina has lit up the scoreboard first here in Columbia. It says super on the scoreboard. That's how Carolina fans feel about it as they go on top. Three to nothing with eight minutes and five seconds to go in the first period. Fantastic. Fantastic. Phenomenal. 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 Your favorite from dozens of styles and colors and take it home in a shiny shopping bag. Come in and see this fantastic, phenomenal, fabulous GTE phone mark. Eight minutes and five seconds to go in the first period. Eddie Leppard puts a foot into this one. And Brooks and Parks watch it sail into the end zone. Parks retrieves it. About five yards deep in the end zone and stays there. Henry Parks, the sophomore from Harrodsburg, elected not to run it out. So on the touchback, Kentucky will begin on the offense for the 20-yard line. That was an excellent kick, and if he kicks them like that all the time, we're not going to have many runbacks on kickoff. Mike Deaton, number one, is the quarterback for Kentucky, the junior from Greensburg. Felix Wilson goes wide to the right side. The back's in the wishbone behind Deaton. That's Freddie Williams trying the left side. He got a couple, and that's about it. Bill Janis, the nose guard, stacked him up inside, and they like Mr. Janis, number 51. We'll set that defensive line again for you for South Carolina. Janis at nose guard. The tackles are Chuck Allen and Fred Sinclair, and the ends are John D'Antonio, 84, and Brett Bond, 81. Coach Carla thinks Janis is every bit as good as Jaffe, and if he's that good, he's going to be trouble for us all night. Again, all three backs in tight for Kentucky. Freddie Williams again, same play. And not much there. Fred Sinclair stacked it up. Dave Hopewell, the center, trying to uh, get him a hole. We've got third and six now. This is a tough down because it almost has to be a passing down, and Kentucky's deep in their territory, and you don't like to pass too often when you first get the ball deep in your own territory. Third and six from the 24. Carolina leading three to nothing with 7.08 to play first quarter. Felix Wilson very wide to the right side. The running back's in tight. Deaton gives to Chris Hill on the sweep left. And a good tackle over there by Tim Singleton. He led the squad in tackling last year, the left side linebacker, and he put a hit on Chris Hill. Well, Tim Singleton's a fine football player, and he showed it then on that tackle. And so that's going to force Kentucky to punt and will give South Carolina good field position. Now here comes number seven for Kentucky, Kevin Kelly, the putter. The oldest man on the Kentucky squad, a Navy veteran. He's stationed back at the 11-yard line to boot this thing. Rick Sanford back deep to receive for South Carolina. High, booming kick. Sanford calling for the fair catch and grabs it at the 35-yard line. Excellent kick, Denny. Just excellent. He kicked that ball uh, about... 40 yards in the air and good hang time where he couldn't do anything but signal for a fair kick. Well, we're seeing uh, two excellent punters here tonight. South Carolina has one of the very best in the nation in Max Runniger, number 14. When he comes on, look out because uh, he can kick at the length of the football field with a little roll. Well, didn't uh, Coach Carlin says the only kicker in the country that's better than he is Raymond Guy, the Oakland Raiders. Up the middle, they go that time to Steve Dorsey. And uh, he's got up to about the 40-yard line. See who gets off the stack for Kentucky. A whole host of white shirts. Hard to pick out the primary tackler there. Well, Steve Dorsey's the fourth back that we talked about in our preliminaries. And, gosh, they all have lived up to expectations of what we thought they would. They're all fast. They're all tough. They can go outside, and they can go inside. 
South Carolina likes to bring in their plays with their tight ends. It's uh, Willie Scott, number 47, in there now. As Bailey goes wide to the right side, Gary Harper two for two so far. Zion McKinney is wide to the left. They pitch it back to Spencer Clark. Look at him dance. Good open field tackle over there. Johnny Wright, number 36, was the ball carrier, and Kovac had to get him with a saving tackle. Kovac plays this. He gets blocked. He still stays with it, but watch him go over and get the tackle. If he hadn't hit him, he may have gone all the way. Very fine play on Kovac. Very fine play. These four runners for South Carolina are numbers 35, 36, 34, and 38. Very difficult at times to pick up who's in the ballgame. 38, George Rogers is back in there now, the fullback spot. Johnny Wright is the tailback. That's Wright with the football, diving ahead to the 40-yard line of Kentucky. Good block in there by Tony Penny, the guard. 6'1", 245, number 64, Tony Penny. Well, those backs are chewing us up inside and outside now, Denny, and the Kentucky defense is going to have to come and watch this handoff as he goes right over the middle, right hits, follows his blockers well, and really wasn't tackled. He just stumbled past over his blocker and then fell down. Gain of seven, make it second and three from the 40-yard line. George Rogers banging forward up to about the 43. It's going to be third and about one, so that's a good position for South Carolina to be in and a bad Kovac position. Kovacs again got off the bottom of the stack for Kentucky there. Craig Roberts and Rick Hayden going out of the lineup for Kentucky. But Deal is back in. I think this is kind of what Kentucky uses in the goal line defense, and they're figuring uh, that South Carolina will not pass on this play, and I'd figure the same way. Third and one from the 36. Straight up the middle for Rodgers. Uh, it's going to be close again, and they're going to have to measure. Now, this is another matter of inches. This could mean a lot to the Kentucky Wildcats if they didn't make it a lot to South Carolina if they did. Richard Jaffe got off the bottom of the pile. And it is a first down. The three minutes and 48 seconds, South Carolina driving again. They scored with 8.05 to go in the first period of the 25-yard field goal by Eddie Leppard. Well, that's their second first down down, Denny. They started on their own 35 with 6.21 to go, and now it's 3.36. They're eating up that clock and keeping that defense on the field a lot of time. Barnett comes to the left side along with McKinney. No place to go there for George Rogers. Kovac made a fine tackle on that play as he busted through like a great linebacker can. Earl Bubba Wilson helping out the defensive tackle number 78. Let's look at this instant replay here and watch Kovac come right through there. And there comes Bubba. Bubba right on top of it. And when Bubba comes at you, you get out of the way. Tommy. I don't want Bubba falling on top of me, I'll tell you that. They list him at 6'4", 240, but he's a little bit bigger. Gain of one, second and nine now from the 35-yard line. Harper to throw. Good coverage by Kentucky. It's David Stevens coming in on the sack, and he got him behind the line of scrimmage, just barely behind the line. That's good, good defense then. Let's watch this instant replay and watch tough skin hit him first and that slowed him up. And then two Kentucky man, let's see who they are coming right in there on top of him. There's the first lick. There comes the second. Number 79 laid right on top of him again. That's Pet Kobe. James Ramey. James Ramey. Excuse me, James. Zion McKinney wide to the left side now. John Bailey to the right. On third and 11. See if he'll go to the air again. Little flare pass out to Johnny Wright. Running room for Wright. Carter has to make the stop at the 22-yard line for Kentucky. Just a little flare pass to his uh, running back, Johnny Wright, and it worked. Well, watch this. This is what we were talking about. They get these speed backs outside, and Wright just makes a terrific move here. Good blocking, and just picked his blockers well, and he just took it down for another first down on Kentucky's 22. That's their third first down now in this drive. Zion McKinney to the right side, John Bailey to the left. Spencer Clark in it, tailback. And Kentucky wants the timeout to talk things over.
From El Paso to Cheyenne, the West was wild once in some... The South Carolina Gamecocks already leading 3 to nothing with a minute and 45 seconds to go in the first period are knocking on Kentucky's door again. They have a first and 10 on the Wildcat 22-yard line. There's uh, Kentucky's defensive end coach Bill Glazer and head coach Fran Kersey. Richie Boyd had a chance to tackle him back there, but he missed that one tackle. When he missed that, right was gone for the first down on that last play, Denny. Bailey wide to the right. Everybody else in tight. George Rogers hit at the line of scrimmage by Ramey. Kentucky's fine and very quick defensive tackle. He got perhaps a yard. That's the kind of defense we've got to have now if we're going to stop this drive. Second and nine from the 21 now. The scoreboard prices do it off it. Well, I'll say this. The offense has been doing it. Johnny Wright in at tailback now, and Spencer Clark out for South Carolina. Again, Bailey wide to the right side. That's Johnny Wright on the sweep. Kovach nailed him, but not before a gain of a couple of more to the Kentucky 19. That's still good defense on that, only in that they only got two yards, and that makes it third and about seven. So the defense has stopped this drive, I believe, unless they get a field goal. A good look at Jim Kovach, Kentucky's famous Dr. K, trying to double team med school and football this fall. Doing a good job of it so far. He had a class right up to the time that the plane left on Friday. Third and eight now from the 19-yard line. This has got to be a passing down. They fake it to George Rogers. He's looking for McKinney. Instead, he's got his tight end coming our way. On the coverage, Richie Boyd, and the ball was dropped. Richie Boyd did an excellent job on this. That pass could have been completed, but he played through him. Watch how Richie plays through him now. And when he plays through him and hits him, he jars that ball loose and makes it an incomplete pass. Willie Scott won't drop too many. A very sure-handed tight end. Couldn't hang on to that one. Well, Willie Scott's supposed to be one of their great players, and I want to tell you, they were worrying about this quarterback not being ready. He has thrown some fine passes tonight. A 36-yard field goal attempt coming now for South Carolina's Eddie Leppard. A side-winding sophomore. It's plenty long enough, and it's good and enough. It's good. South Carolina leads now six to nothing with 17 seconds remaining in the first period. South Carolina really uh, continues to just march through the Kentucky defense, Tommy. Well, Denny, they started out with 6:21 on the time clock and they started on their own 35 yard line and they marched all the way down to get that field goal from he kicked it from the 17 yard line which made it a, about a 27 yard field goal and it uh, it's one of those kind of things I guess that the defense is lucky to come out with only six points after shoot two such terrific drives they've made so maybe we've got to give that defense some credit even though they held them to just two field goals I'd be interested in seeing the uh, time of possession statistics so far because Kentucky has had it precious little. South Carolina owned the football almost the entire first period. Well, they started out with 14.53 and took it all the way to 8.05. Kentucky had 8.05 to 6.21, and they had it 6.21 to 17 seconds, so you can see the time difference. Eddie Leppard, 17 to kick off. Brooks and Parks are deep for Kentucky. Again, Henry Parks picks it. Five yards deep in the end zone and stays there. So it comes out to the 20, and Kentucky will go on the offense once again with 17 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Denny, that looked like an instant replay of that first kickoff, and I'm afraid that he's going to kick it in that end zone like that every time, the way he kicks that football. No wonder he beat that first-team man out last year. By the way, do you know who holds the South Carolina record for the longest field goal, a 52-yarder? A fellow named Tommy Bell. He showed me that in the statistics, and I hope he's kin to me because I'm proud to know that a man can hold that record. Kentucky from the straight T formation, Deaton to throw, aiming it for Felix Wilson. He's got him at the 30, and Felix the Cat dives ahead to the 33. That's good. I'm glad to see Mike Deaton complete his first pass because that always gives a quarterback who's had a lot of pressure on, and Felix runs a good pattern, but Mike just nailed that ball right in there. Mike can be a great, great passer. Felix Wilson loves to dance, and he's just got magic feet. He can get open very, very easily. Good pass route runner. That's the end of the first quarter. 
for the score. Carolina 6, Kentucky nothing. We'll return after these messages. <laughs> Unexpected expenses, right? Sometimes all it takes is that initial first down to get a team rolling. Let's see if this one has ignited the Wildcat. Felix Wilson, who just caught the pass for the first down, very wide to the left side. The back's in tight. On the bootleg, Mike Deaton out by himself. Chased and dropped over there. He makes Nat Veal with a very good tackle, the strong safety man, Nat Veal. He made a couple of yards on that and had a chance to even make more. Mike looked like he ran that ball well, and I'm glad to see that. He's completed his first pass, and he ran well. It's Greg Nord checking in, the tight end for Kentucky. Then in that first quarter, South Carolina had the ball for 11 minutes and 59 seconds, and Kentucky had it for 3 minutes and 1 second. Is that good offensive line for the Wildcats, some good blocking line. In there that time by Tommy Kearns, the guard, along with Ronnie Thomas, who's starting in place of the injured Dan Fowler. <laughs> Referee Ray Bauer talking things over here with his crew, Tommy. Yes, he sure is. There's Butch Lambert. Lambert coming away. That Mr. SEC. There's the backfield for Kentucky. Freddie Williams at left half. Chris Hill at right. And the fullback is Randy Brooks, 45. He faked it to Brooks, faked the pitch back now to Freddie Williams and hit it just about the line of scrimmage. Mike Deaton didn't get much. Well, I think he made a wise move of not pitching that out because just as he faked the pitch, well, they sure, they sure hit him hard over there. So Mike made a fine move on not pitching that ball. Tim Singleton, the left side linebacker, came up to meet it well. George Rogers, the leading rusher in the game so far for South Carolina, Nine rushes for 29 yards. Johnny Wright, five for 27. Here's that double wing or trips formation for Kentucky now. Brooks, the only setback behind Deaton, dropping the throw. Got away from one man and finds a pass receiver, Chris Hill, at about the 47-yard line, and Chris couldn't hang on. Tim Singleton on the coverage for South Carolina. Mike uh, did a good job of breaking loose, moving up. Had Chris there, but I think he rushed his throw a little bit and threw it too low, and it was a hit that Chris could have caught, but it would have been very difficult for him to do so. Here's the Kentucky punter, Kevin Kelly on. Rick Sanford back deep to receive for South Carolina. 13-15 to go. Fourth and seven Wildcats on their own 36-yard line. And off the side of his foot and goes out of bounds. And I think it's in Kentucky territory, very close to right the field strike. They're going to spot it in Kentucky territory at the 49, I believe. Well, that's one of those kind of things that Ticker dreads. It hit on the side of his foot, went off, and just went right toward the Kentucky bench. Tommy, here's that time of possession in the first quarter. South Carolina had it for 11 minutes and 59 seconds. Kentucky, 3 minutes and 1 second. Dorsey in at fullback now. Dorsey with the football straight up the gut. He got it down to the 46th of Kentucky, so give him a gain of uh, about three on the play. Make it second and seven. They, they're stopping that up the middle now, so I think you're going to see that South Carolina is going to start using a little bit of their wide stuff. Might even see it right on this play. Zion McKinney wide to the right side. The back's in the eye behind quarterback Gary Harper. Harper to throw. A good rush. Ending it over the middle. And he's saying John Bailey, and Bailey dropped the ball. He heard footsteps. Bud Deal was coming from behind. He made that mistake of getting ready to run with the football before he had it because even though that pass wobbled, it was right there to him, and it was an easy kick. Now we've got a third down and almost a passing down again, and... Either they're going to have to come wide, I believe, or they're going to have to pass again, Denny. Johnny Wright comes out. Spencer Clark goes in, number 35, at tailback. John Bailey normally has great hands. He's not a real speedster. The man who just dropped that uh, pass, and so it's third and seven now for the 46. Harper going upstairs again. 
He's got his man Dorsey coming out of the backfield, and he's hit by Venus Mukes on a good open field tackle at the 38-yard line in Kentucky Territory. And it's going to be close, but I believe it's a first down again for South Carolina. It is. They disguised that one well, the flare pass to Dorsey coming out of the backfield. Well, Harper has certainly made Jim Carlin happy tonight. If he was worried about him, he has done very, very well with his passing. Ben Cornett, 46 in at tight end. Willie Scott out. Harper is four for six in the passing department. As we told you, he was five for eight. They didn't throw much last week against Furman. They didn't need to. Spencer Clark on the draw. Lots of running room. In that instance, the only man that slowed him down that time was the umpire behind the line of scrimmage. And if he hadn't slowed him down, he might have gone all the way. Watch this run into the umpire a little bit and then get tackled. Here he comes right here, and he has to strip over. If he could have gotten outside the umpire, he would have had a lot of running room. Finally, Lester Boyd and Venus Mukes converged on him. There's Lester Boyd pulling at linebacker, number 54 for Kentucky now, from Franklin, the junior redshirt. Second and four, South Carolina as the back shift out of the eye. Gary Harper, the quarterback, faked it inside the clock, keeps it himself, and has to be tackled at the 20-yard line by the man we just talked about, the linebacker, Lester Boyd. Well, Harper made another very fine run then. He made a nice pitch out, a good fake, kept it, and ran well after he kept that ball under his arm. He's down now to Kentucky's 22-yard line, and they're putting a lot of pressure on Kentucky's defense again. No one all of last season was this successful against the Kentucky defense early in the ballgame. Well, that's the second first down in this drive after the bad punt off of Kevin Kelly's foot. First and 10 now. Spencer Clark tries the middle. Ramey meets him there with help from Kovach. Ten minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the first half, and Kentucky trailing South Carolina six to nothing. The Gamecocks opened their season last week with a 45 to 10 win over Furman. There's Jimmy Kovach, the captain of that Kentucky defense. Kentucky's defense has been on the field now for almost 15 minutes, and in that hot weather, that's pretty tiring. And I'm, I'm still pretty proud of them that they haven't allowed anything but field goals. Second and eight Gamecocks from the 20-yard line of Kentucky. Harper looking downfield. Double pump found his man, but it's uh, incomplete. Now a flag goes down. We're going to have pass interference, and that's going to be a close call, and I'm sure that uh, our fans will probably want to look at that one again. Rick Hayden was right on the back of John Bailey, who dropped one earlier when that one came loose. Interception was the call against Rick Hayden. So it'll be first and goal now from the Kentucky five-yard line. Interference. Interference by Mr. Hayden, and that's on the five-yard line. First and goal to go. Now they've got it inside the 10 again. Let's see what Kentucky defense can do. George Rogers back in at fullback, number 38. McKinney went in motion, a busted play. And coming up to make a good tackle is Larry Carter. He got the quarterback, uh, Gary Harper, out where he really couldn't do anything with it. I Carter brought him down. I couldn't tell whether that was a busted play or whether it was designed. If, uh, if it was a busted play, uh, I think they they were lucky uh, maybe not to have lost more yards. And we were lucky maybe that he didn't score because Carter made a fine tackle over there, as you call it. Here's Spencer Clark coming back in now for South Carolina, or coming out, I should say. Johnny Wright is in. He ended up losing a yard on that, Denny. Second and goal from the six. Harper rolling, aiming it in the end zone. Intercepted. Intercepted. And uh, unfortunately, Venus Mukes came out of that end zone and fell out of bounds very deep in Kentucky territory. If he had caught the ball in the end zone and stayed there, it would have been a touchback and come out to the 20. Unfortunately, he fell out of bounds at the one. I can't blame Venus for going ahead and intercepting that ball. I think that uh, he had to intercept it, and he couldn't intercept it anywhere except in the field of play. It was just unfortunate he had to dive to intercept it, and that carried him on out of bounds. I think he made a fine play, and even though it does put Kentucky in a hole. Actually, it's inside the one. The nose of the football is almost at the Kentucky goal line. You're looking at the Wildcats on the sidelines there. Billy Williams and Dave Fedrowski and Carl Marilla. Nine and a half minutes to go in the first half. 
You can't afford a mistake. Any kind of a turnover here would be drastic. That's Freddie Williams dancing out of trouble. Now they're pushing him back. Fast Freddie Williams from Miami, Florida. He got almost up to the five yard line, so that gets him out of a lot of trouble. No, he got up to about the three and a half yard line. I thought he got almost up to the five. But that does help. That does move up instead of being on your one and back out. If Kentucky can get out and get a first down or maybe two first downs, then get a good punt play and get a little bit better field position, I really think they'll like that interception by Venus Moe. Give him a gain of three, make it second and seven. Chris Hill trying to come wide. Got a good block and got almost up to the 10-yard line. Looks like we've got about a second and two or three, Denny, and, and here he comes. Chris makes a good hard run, and he's hit and still tires on for about three or four more yards after he was hit. Fine running, Chris. So it'll be third and three now. A big play for Kentucky. This is important, so you can get yourself out of this hole, because if we have to kick back here, then they're threatening again. Freddie Williams on the run, tackled by Scott Wade, the linebacker. And I believe he made that first down. He's got it. There's the sign for referee Ray Bauer. Vince Lombardi made famous that phrase, run to daylight, and that's something that Freddie Williams does very well. You don't have to give him much of a hole for him to get some yards. Just give him a crack, and Freddie will get through it. There's Bill Colston, who just checked into the lineup at a wideout, number five for Kentucky. 6'2", 183, senior from Chicago. Colston is out very wide to the left side. Randy Brooks tries the middle of the Carolina line and gets a couple. That run by Freddie Williams to daylight was very important because that did give Kentucky a first down. Now, one more first down, and they're going to have good field position, and maybe even they're able to operate and keep the drive alive. Randy Brooks, the fullback, does not have the size of the uh, normal fullback type. He's 5'8", 185 pounds, a junior from Louisville. He had Kentucky's longest run from scrimmage last year. Mike Deaton so far, one for two in the passing department. Right now, he's got a second and seven situation with the ball on his own 16-yard line. Look at that. Chris Hill has lots of running room. Got a good block. Got to the outside and finally is ridden out of bounds at All the 33-yard right. line. All right, Denny. That's a fine run, fine block. And that gets Kentucky out with their second first down. And let's watch this run that Chris Hill makes. He comes off to his left tackle and gets a good block in there with a big hole and then gets another block on the halfback and comes out of bounds. And really, that does make a big difference now because Kentucky's got field position and, and they can move where they can operate and Mike can start throwing the football again. What a credit it would be to this Kentucky offense if they could come back and mount a 99-yard drive to pay dirt. First and 10 here. Deaton on the roll. He's got Tommy Kearns, the guard, out ahead of him. Looking downfield, Mike finally fires the ball incomplete. Intended for Felix the Cat, Felix Wilson, at about the 39-yard line. They had excellent coverage on Felix on a down-and-out pattern to the sideline. Mike very wisely faked it, and then Felix came back to the middle, and then Mike threw it to him. And when he did throw it to him, it was just overlet him just a little bit. Saw a real good shot there of the defensive end number 84, John D'Antonio. And Kentucky's coaches feel like D'Antonio is about as good as defensive end as they'll face this season. We've got a penalty coming up here, Denny, and uh, I'm afraid it might be against Kentucky because they were talking to the South Carolina captain. Let's see what Ray Byer's signal is. Holding half the distance to the goal line. That was a costly penalty. Well, any time you have trouble spotting receivers downfield and you have to dance around back there, you do uh, run that risk of getting the holding penalty. That's so true. Also ineligible man downfield. Again from that double wing set. Randy Brooks, the only man behind Mike Deaton on first and 25. Deaton intending this one for Chris Hill and overshot him. That deal on the coverage for South Carolina. There's Timmy Singleton, the left side linebacker for South Carolina, their leading tackler last year. Well, this does put Kentucky uh, second and 25, and South Carolina knows that they can kind of get in what the, we used to call the old umbrella of victory defense, and when they do that, that makes passing tough. And Mike uh, did have Chris open, but overthrew him that time, but I, he wouldn't have gone very far, I don't think, after he caught it. Again, from that trip set, he's got Freddie Williams, plenty of room to run. Freddie finally hit by Nat Veal and ridden out of bounds with help from a couple of other Gamecocks. But a good game for Kentucky as Deaton found Williams in the seam. 
That was almost a 15-yard gain, and that was a good play selection because you can't throw deep on that defense that South Carolina was in, but you could come underneath the bat linebackers as they backed up, and that's exactly what Mike had Freddie Williams doing. Watch him on this run now. Freddie's got his shoulder pad exposed, and under the new rules, he'll have to be out of there now. They've got Henry Parks in, number 34, the sophomore from Harrodsburg, replacing Williams while he gets a new jersey. Third and 11 now from the 30-yard line. Quick pass for Hill. He's got it. Enough for the first down, up to the 45-yard line. Mike Deaton looked like the Mike Deaton I expect him to be this year on those last two passes. He just rifled those right in there, and fine catches that Chris Hill made on that play, and it's another first down for the Cats, and it's 631, and they have the ball on their own 45. They've got a chance to take it all the way in, then, and wouldn't that be something if we went out on top 7-6? to six? South Carolina has a freshman starter at free safety in Robert Perlote. Let's see if they'll pick on him a little bit. First and 10 now from the line of the Wildcats. That's Freddie Williams again, running across the midfield stripe into South Carolina territory at the 49. Robert Perlot came up from that uh, free safety position to make that hit. Felix Wilson going to the sideline and talking with offensive coordinator Perry Moss there. Bill Tolston in, going wide to the left for Kentucky. Freddie Williams again. Good balance for Williams that time as he dove forward to about the 45-yard line, a gain of four. Freddie is a very deceiving runner when you watch him go into that line. It doesn't look like he gets much, but he keeps fighting the first time. I didn't have any idea he'd made six yards, and he almost made a first down then. It's about third and a half a yard, and neither one of them looked like he made a very big gain. Deaton 50% in the passing department so far. Let's see if he'll stick to the ground here on third and one from the 45. Randy Brooks, the up back in the wishbone. He's got a first down. Five minutes and six seconds to go in the first half. South Carolina leading six to nothing on a pair of field goals by sophomore soccer-style kicker Eddie Leppard. Greg Nord out, and Scott Peterson in at tight end for Kentucky. Again from that double wing set. Deaton with a little screen pass over there. Good running by Randy Brooks. Look at him get out ahead. One man to beat if he can get by Nat Beal. It's a touchdown. Waiting for the signal. There it is. Touchdown, Kentucky. Randy Brooks on the pass from Mike Gooden. Let's watch, Mike. This is a beautiful look. offense Kentucky's running here. Looks a lot like Dallas Cowboys. And he throws this ball out to Randy Brooks. And he looks like Count Tony Dorsett running that football. He cuts down that sideline. Picks up his blockers well. Now watch him as he gets down there in this goal line. This is sheer determination because he didn't have any right to get in. His knee might have hit there on the two-yard line, but it's a touchdown. So now under pressure, trying for his first extra point attempt as a college player, freshman Tommy Griggs out of the hold of Billy Williams. It's up. Griggs, the freshman who just put Kentucky ahead with his first conversion try as a college player, kicking off now. Back deep to receive for Carolina. George Rogers is the deep man in the middle. Rogers will take it at the four. Got a wedge in front of it. Look at Rogers. Skip and dance through. Carl Marilla making sure he didn't go any further there after an initial hit by Chuck Jones. Kentucky on the defense now. This is a good run back for this boy. He has a lot of speed. And Tommy Griggs made a good kick almost to the goal line, but boy, he just comes up that middle so fast. And Kentucky's defense did a good job of containing him on the 32. Kind of unusual having a fullback back deep in but the he, middle of the kickoff. He's got enough speed to be a halfback or a fullback, Danny. First and 10 from the 32. Spencer Clark trying to dance outside and nailed by tough skin Stevens. How they Camden, uh, New Jersey senior made a great play there. Lynn and Dave Hull, be pleased to see Tough Skin make that play because he just played that perfect. Came in and held it. You know, he's and got better speed than Art Still had. He can run the 40 and 4-6, and that's flying for a defensive end. Tommy. Especially a man as big as he is, Denny. 6'4", 220-pound senior. 
second and 12 now after the loss of two. Back shift out of the eye. As Harper, the quarterback, keeping it. Brought down by Kelly Kirchbaum and company for Kentucky. Kentucky's defense looks pretty tough now. On these very first two plays, and they've stopped South Carolina for the first time, I think, with just about a yard or two gain on two plays. Most of the time it's been uh, second down and three or maybe third down and one yard, and then they've made it by inches. But you've got to give that defense a lot of credit. They've been put to the test inside that 10, and all they've come away with is two field goals. Well, they've got a third and nine situation now. That's one that no coach likes to have to call a play on. Bailey wide to the right side, McKinney to the left. Up the middle, Spencer Clark, well short of the first down, and uh, you're going to see the strong foot of Max Runniger, number 14, one of the very best punters in the country, come in now and do his thing for Carolina. This is a good play by Kentucky's defensive line. Even though he made about five yards, you have to play it a little bit loose, and, and they came in and held him well. Now, this kid can really kick the ball, and this is the first time South Carolina's had to punt tonight. He averaged a school record 42.8 last year, averaged 44 yards a kick last week against Furman, and his very first one was a 48-yarder that went out of bounds between the two and the three-yard line. Back deep to receive it for Kentucky, Larry Carter. Renniger kicking from the 24. Trying to draw Kentucky offside, perhaps, with a very long count on fourth and four. Either that, uh, Denny, or they figure they'd like to run as much time off that clock as they can and go ahead and take a five-yard penalty because the way the boy kicks this ball, five yards doesn't make too much difference. And Here's Larry Carter, the deep receiver for Kentucky, who came to the Lexington campus as a quarterback, was moved to a wide receiver, and they say he's such a great athlete he could play just about anywhere he wants to. I think that was a pretty smart move on Carolina's part because they either get a first down if Kentucky jumps off or they just lose five yards and run a lot of time off the clock. Runninger got a great foot into this one. Carter at the 20-yard line, retreating. Got a good block. David Stevens wiped out a couple of people, and Carter got back across to the 27-yard line. David Stevens wiped out two men on that punt return. Now Mike Deaton's back in, and wouldn't it be something if Kentucky would come up with another touchdown here with just two minutes to go? Let's watch Larry Carter now, and let's watch this box of tough skin Stevens. He not only gets one South Carolina player but he gets two of them there's tough <laughs> i tell you that's a good block felix wilson wide to the left side now for kentucky tolston to the right side that's freddie williams on the carry stacked up right at the line of scrimmage john d'antonio the defensive end was in there along with scott wade the linebacker well I'd like to wish Richard Loy, who's a good friend of mine, who's sick in bed, Denny, and he's a great booster of Mike, Den Mike Deaton. And I tell you, Mike has done a lot for you tonight, Richard, and if that's going to help you get well, I sure hope that uh, that's a good tonic that Mike's given you. Colston is out. Greg Nord, 88 in for Kentucky. He's wide to the left side. Freddie Williams again on the carry, shaking off tacklers and diving forward to almost the 35-yard line where Scott Wade, the linebacker, got him again. He's still running to daylight and didn't look like he made much yardage, but he picked up almost uh, at least five yards on that play, and we've got about a third and four coming up now, and this is a tough decision for Coach Kersey and Coach Perry Moss. Are they going to run the football and hold on to it to, uh, and not give Carolina a chance to get it and maybe score, or are we going to pass the football and try to go for another? Let's call it third and three from the 35. Straight up the middle, and it looks like it's going to be short. I think that's a good call. If I'd been uh, calling that play, with the way our defense has been put to the test, and they've had that ball for almost the whole first half, and we're behind uh, six to nothing, and then make that great 99-yard drive for a touchdown, and we go out leading seven to six, that's got to be a big boost for the Wildcats. W.T. Williams, a reserve defensive lineman, made that hit, and a big one it was for South Carolina, and here comes the Kentucky punny unit on. Number 55 there is Chuck Jones, a very valuable member of the specialty teams, and the backup nose guard behind Richard Jaffe. Rick Sanford is back deep to receive this kick. Kevin Kelly from the 27. Sanford takes the fair catch. He had to call five fair catches in the game last week against Furman. They say he has very sure hands, and that's why he's back there. 
Just 16 seconds to go, Denny, and uh, that puts uh, Florida back, or South Carolina. I've called them Florida twice. South Carolina's going to get me. South Carolina is in, on their own 33-yard line, and with 16 seconds to go, and I believe the Wildcats are going to go out on top 7-6, to six, and I know Kurt Ke Kersey, after the way this first half has gone, is really pleased and proud of his team. Horace Smith, number 44, a freshman who can really fly, is into the backfield for South Carolina. He's wide to the right side now. Let's see if they'll use him going deep on first and 10. Harper to throw. Aiming it deep downfield for Zion McKinney and nearly caught down there. Larry Carter on the coverage. McKinney got his hands on it but couldn't hold on. Good coverage, though, by Carter. That was excellent coverage by Larry Carter, and that Zion McKinney scares me to death. Uh, he, uh, he can really move, and this kid Harper can throw the football. We mentioned the fact in the pregame show that McKinney sometimes coming around on that end-around play will stop and throw the ball. He threw the longest non-scoring pass in Carolina football history last year, a 76-yarder. This time it's Horace Smith, 44, wide to the left side, and McKinney wide to our side, or your side, the near side of the screen. George Rogers off left tackle. Not much there. Just five seconds, four seconds. That should be the final play of the first half. And that's it, the end of the first half of the score, Kentucky. Bank of Jackson, the bank with the personal touch, member FDIC. It's Kentucky leading here at halftime. I'd say both defenses have played very well since Kentucky uh, was marched on pretty well early in the game, Tommy. Well, South Carolina shows that they've got a fine football team, and exactly what we said they would do. The only thing they've done that we didn't really expect was to Harper to be as good a passer as he was. We expected those backs to be great runners, they were. But Harper, it looks like a fine quarterback, and that even, to me, gives Kentucky's defense a little bit more credit. That's right. Even the ones that Harper has misfired on have come uh, very close to being complete passes. At halftime here in Columbia, we pause now for station identification. Let yourself go to pizza hut. Get more of what you go for. Want a zipper More sausage. More cheese. When you do so, to see the Wildcats in action. I believe the University of Kentucky football program is sound. And one reason for this is because it's part of a sound university. A university whose primary functions continue to be threefold. Teaching, research, service. Over 22,000 students are enrolled this fall on the Lexington campus, with some 17,000 more enrolled in UK's 13 community colleges located throughout the state. These students are taught by a faculty which not only performs its instructional duties, but also attracts over $25 million annually in research grants. As for service, UK people and programs are found in every county of the Commonwealth, and we are pleased to continue to provide these needed services to thousands of Kentuckians. With your help and support, we will constantly strive to make your university the very best university possible, whether it be on the athletic field or through the less publicized and less visible victories in the classroom in the research laboratories, or in the many other programs designed to reach... ...band, which, by the way, includes some Lexington, Kentucky bandsmen, is on the field right now performing under the direction of Jim Copenhaver, and we'll just take a listen.
South Carolina at halftime. Seven to six on a 43-yard pass play from Mike Deaton to Randy Brooks, and we'll be back after this. South Carolina trailing Kentucky here, although the Gamecocks have outgained Kentucky and they have more first downs. The Wildcats are leading here, seven to six at halftime. South Carolina has 10 first downs so far to Kentucky's six. You look at uh, one of the Wildcat cheerleaders here on the sidelines. South Carolina already has rushed for 101 yards compared to 59 on the ground for Kentucky. The Wildcats do have more in the way of passing yardage, 85 for the Wildcats to 40 for the Gamecocks. Wildcats have had gained them, though, Denny, 144 total yardage to 141 for South Carolina. Who would have ever believed that after the first quarter? And, of course, that 43-yard uh, pass play had a whole bunch to do with that. Uh, it's taken a lot in one chunk. That sure did. And that was a beautiful one up for the Kentucky fans. In the way of penalties so far, Kentucky's been penalized four times for 39 yards. South Carolina has had the hanky drafts against them only twice for 20 yards. Well, it's interesting to note that over Kentucky overcame a 15-yard penalty on that 99-yard drive. So if you want to say they went 99 yards, they went 100 actually in 14 yards because they had a 15-yard penalty in there during that drive. This telecast of University of Kentucky football is the sole property of WKYT-TV and the University of Kentucky, and any reproduction of the descriptions, pictures, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of WKYT-TV and the University of Kentucky is prohibited. The leading has completed four of nine. He had one picked off by Venus Mukes, the young sophomore for Kentucky. Harper's passes have netted the game Cox 40 yards in the way of pass receiving. Spencer Clark pulled one in for 15. And Willie Scott won for 12 yards. Months of preparation have gone into bringing you this telecast, and we'll be back to show you some of those preparations in a moment. Means on late model trucks at South Kentucky Mac, you'll find a good selection of 44 and 55 bogey tandems and late model 44-inch bogey tractors from 75, 76, and 77. South Kentucky Mac has a large parts inventory to get you back on the job in the least amount of time. The big name to remember in Mac trucks is South Kentucky Mac trucks. Route 1 in Somerset. This is a Domino's pizza store. A store of pizza specialists. Pizza is the only thing Domino's pizza makes. It enables them to do it right. Starting with the freshest ingredients, nothing is ever frozen, dehydrated, processed, or powdered. It's a wholesome, nutritious meal in itself. For hot, friendly, fast delivery. Call Domino's Pizza. Check your Yellow Pages directory for the Domino's Pizza store near you, limited delivery area. Coming back here to begin the second half, Kentucky received the second half kickoff in the end zone. It came out to the 20, and all we missed was the first play, a four-yard gain up the middle by fullback Randy Brooks, who caught a 43-yard touchdown pass for the Wildcats in the first half. Now it's second and six, a gain of four on the opening play. Deaton in trouble behind the line and has to eat it back inside the 10. At the nine-yard line, Deaton is down. Well, Mike didn't have anything to do with that ball, and uh, I'm sure he'd like to have dropped down a little bit sooner, but it didn't look like Carolina players were going to let him drop down. So that puts Kentucky in a big hole. It's going to be third down and about 20. Brett Bond and uh, John D'Antonio, the two defensive end, were both coming. 13.55 now to play in the third period. Kentucky from that double wing set. Brooks the only set back behind Deaton on third and 19. He gave it to Brooks on the draw and he's hit short of the line of scrimmage. Number 51, Janice, is the one that really stopped that draw play. He smelled it out and hit him first and that really helped Carolina stop that draw. That was a good call by Mike Deaton. You couldn't hardly pass down there, and a draw play was the right call. So now Kevin Kelly to punt from his own end zone. About four yards deep in his own end zone. It may have been tipped. A line drive punt that Sanford is going to let bounce. It's in Kentucky territory at about the 47-yard line. Kentucky got a lucky bounce on that ball because you, I agree with you. It looked like it was tipped because it came out of there awful low. Freddie Williams, by the way, was Kentucky's leading rusher in the first half. Eight carries for 25 yards. Chris Hill lugged it three times for 22. 
Randy Brooks, three for nine. The big play, of course, the long pass from Deaton to Randy Brooks. Deaton was four for six through the air for 85 yards on the touchdown. Gary Harper now running the attack for Carolina. He was four for nine. Giving it to George Rogers. He's fullback, and the big man pulls his way to the Kentucky 40-yard line. That's the way they started out in that first half. I tell you, they opened up a big hole on Kentucky's right side. Watch this Rodgers go through there. He has got terrific speed and carries that ball in there like a good fullback should and almost made a first down, just a little bit short. On the gain of eight, it's second and two. Twelve and a half minutes to play in the third period. Kentucky leading seven to six. Carolina backs in the eye. That's Spencer Clark who dots the eye, trying to circle around Kentucky's ends. Doesn't get much. I believe he might. It's awful close for a first down. They might have to measure it, even though he didn't get much. It's uh, kind of like a Freddie Williams, and it is a first down. That's a Freddie Williams play there, Denny. Those with the football was just across the sticks there. Spotted at the Kentucky 37. The offensive line there for South Carolina, and it's been a good one so far tonight. The tackles Bill Lane and George Schechterly. Schechterly, 77, by the way, is a transfer from Penn State, and uh, Coach Jim Carlin said he could be the best ever to play for South Carolina. Started some of his freshman season for Penn State. That's George Rogers, the fullback. Gang tackled in there at the 35-yard line, a gain of two. played that well Kentucky's defense they stopped that play that time we've got to watch now for something coming out to the left side I think now and since they've got second and eight they'll probably open it up a little second down closer to nine I guess with the ball at about the 36 yard line Zion McKinney very wide to the left side they fake it to Johnny Wright Harper on the quarterback keep gets up to about the 32 Lester Boyd getting off the bottom of the stack. There's Gary Harper, the Carolina quarterback. That's a number we've called out a lot tonight, number 54 for Kentucky Lester Boyd. You see Gary Harper now, five for nine. And he's in a passing situation, Denny. This might be one of the big plays of the game right here because if Kentucky can hold. They look like they're out of field goal range, and this is a real big play for Carolina and Kentucky both. On third and five. Spencer Clark goes out on the wing on the left side. So they're running Kentucky's double wing set. Harper looking and tended over there for Spencer Clark and broken up. Good coverage by David Stevens, the tall defensive end who reached up and got a hand on it. Oh, tough skin played that well then, didn't he? Then we got attendance of 56,385 people, and I don't even see there's a place for anybody to sit if they came in late. williams Bryce Stadium is only supposed to hold 54,406, so there's some people standing around watching, and you can see a lot of them on the, uh, on the runways to come into this place, Tommy. This great punter is going to try to kick it out of bounds, and he, they tell me he's good at it. He had a 48-yarder in the first half. This one is high. He'll try to get a bounce. Good coverage down around the one. Let's see. Did it get in? No, it got in the end zone. Touchback. Touchback. Well, the Carolina players didn't think so. There's Max Runniger, the man who booted it down, arguing about the situation. If the impetus of an offensive player carries the ball into the end zone, it comes back out as a touchback. You're so right. That was close. Well, Kentucky's defense did a great job then. They uh, had bad field position and on Kentucky's 48, and they just stood right up there and held them into it. Randy Brooks, Chris Hill, and Freddie Williams with the setbacks behind Mike Deep, first and 10 from the 20. Randy Brooks up the middle for nothing. Maybe even a loss of a yard. They'll probably get him back to the line of scrimmage. David Hopewell, the Kentucky center on the bottom of that pile. Let's set the Kentucky forward wall for you. They helped to engineer that long drive. The center is David Hopewell. The guards are Tom Kern, 75, and Ron Thomas, 74. They tackles big Richard Jardine, they're 71, and Larry Pitkosik, 63. Pitkosik goes about 255 pounds. The tight end, Greg Nord, and the split end, Felix Wilson, out wide to the left side, second and 10. Deaton to Freddie Williams on a slant, and he didn't get much, perhaps a yard. Well, this Carolina defense is really tough, Denny. They, Perry Moss said, I think, in an article in our paper just this last week that they have shown 48 different formations on defense. And you can see them slanting 
and that's one of the things that makes that blocking in that line awful tough. That was a good play against the green, but with that slanting, that caught exactly what we had to, to beat, and we couldn't do it. Tim Singleton, number 54, their left side linebacker, has played a whale of a game. Roscoe Watson, number 52, is in at nose guard now. There you see the stats on Mike Deaton so far. On third and eight from the 22, Chris Hill. Little counter action there to Chris Hill, and he had running room out to almost the 30-yard line. Looks like we're going to be in a punting situation, but that's, again, I think Kentucky's offense is designed now trying to beat that slant, and they caught it then, and Chris almost broke it. If that man hadn't caught him from behind, he had had a good yardage for a first down. Good open field tackle by Robert Perlot, their freshman free safety. And Kevin Kelly is in to punt again for the Wildcats. He's stationed back at his 15. Sanford to receive for South Carolina in single safety. Waving for the fair catch, and that's something you've got to do this year is make a very, very uh, visible fair catch signal, Tommy. I think that's one of the new rules, Denny, and also uh, you fans saw that the South Carolina man hit and knocked Kevin Kelly down, but he was blocked into him by a Kentucky man, and that is not running into or roughing the kicker. Now they've got Florida back on their own 39. And South Carolina. 43. South Carolina. We keep Denny. saying Florida. Did I say Florida again? Yeah. South Carolina's going to maybe, maybe that's helping Kentucky. When I started saying <laughs> that, they started holding them. From the eye again at the 39-yard line, they shift out of it. George Rogers off right tackle. That's right. up after a gain of about three. Richard Jaffe made the hit. There's Fran Kersey. Fran, you got to be proud of that defense. Jaffe uh, is playing another superlative game, and Rogers, the Carolina fullback, is a great runner, and boy, he hits right in there. Interestingly enough, both nose guards in this game are from Miami, Florida or South Miami, and there are 15 players on these two teams from the South Florida area. Gary Harper leading his team out on second and seven from the 42. Spencer Clark, they faked it to him. Harper kept it. I'm glad Spencer Clark didn't have that football. <laughs> I thought for a minute that he did and that he was gone. Another good defensive play. Craig Roberts. The Camp Hill, Pennsylvania senior on the hit for Kentucky, playing a defensive end now in place of Bud Deal. Here's Greg Motley coming in, number 31 for Kentucky, and Johnny Wright checking into the South Carolina lineup. Wright is 36. The tailbacks, Johnny Wright and Spencer Clark alternating all evening, 35 and 36. This has got to be a passing situation. Harper looking over the middle. Throws a foot. He got Johnny Bailey right at the 45-yard line, and he drilled that ball, Tommy. Rick Hayden uh, came just a little bit late. You see Felix backing up Wilson, and him cutting right across, and Rick Hayden coming up strong, and he played it well, but he just got there a little late, and it was a great catch. Played right through him like a good safety man will. They mentioned earlier that Bailey, 43, the wide receiver for South Carolina, does not have great speed, but they say he runs superlative pass routes, much like uh, Howard Twilley did in all those great seasons for the Miami Dolphins. Not great foot speed, but a great catcher and a great route runner. Now the tight end going to the left side now is Ben Cornett. They give it inside to George Rogers, the fullback, and he gets to the 40-yard line. A gain of about three will make it second and seven. 6.48 to play third period. Kentucky leading seven to six. Kentucky scored on a 43-yard pass from Mike Deaton to Randy Brooks. Two South Carolina field goals have accounted for six points for the game, Scott. Well, I'm sorry to say, Denny, it looks like we're starting out this second half just like we did the first half with the defense having to stay on this field a long time, and Gary Harper's coming up there again. Bubba Wilson in on the defensive line for Kentucky, 78. Harper pitches it back to George Rogers, hit behind the line. What a tackle there. That was Craig Roberts, the veteran of that defensive unit who really put a hit on him, and Richie Boyd was there, the Wildcat, along with Bob Winkle, the defensive tackle. Kentucky played that defense like the defensive coach, Charlie Bailey, would draw it up on the defensive board. That was just perfect. I know he's smiling over there on the sideline after that. They played the pitch man perfect. They made him throw it back to the halfback, and when the halfback got it, they were there ready to meet him. Third and nine now from the 44. We'll see if Harper will go to the air again. He's got Zion McKinney, his favorite receiver, to the right side. Looking that way, throwing back the other way, and headed for the tight end, Willie Scott, and he's got him short of a first down. Rick Hayden with good coverage, along with 
Larry Carter. Fourth and two now with 5.24 to go, third period. I believe they're going to punt the football, Denny. That's Billy Mitchell, man in charge of Kentucky's kicking game with his hands up in the air as you saw on the sidelines, but Runniger going to try to punt it out. Not much rush. Fair catch signal down there by Larry Carter, but the ball bouncing around inside the 10 and down at the six, between the six and seven yard line. Spotting it at almost the seven. So Kentucky will have to go 93 yards to put more points on the board. Well, maybe that's a good indication. Our only score came from 99 when we were deep, and if we can get that first down to get us out of there, that might get us in the mood to get good field position and go all the way again. Mike Deaton, the junior from Greensboro, leads his team out. Chris Hill hitting up the middle. He got a couple. Very tough yards, Tommy. They were tough. They were about as tough as it can be, and Chris was running hard. And But let me tell you, South Carolina's defense is tough, too. That is a good football team Kentucky's playing tonight. They started out last year 4-1. and one, And lost five of their last seven. That was after Zion McKinney was hurt, too, bro. Second and eight now. In the 10-yard line. That's Freddie Williams. Hit and drop. Well, even though he was dropped, he got about three yards. That's one of those typical Freddie Williams runs where you don't look like he gets anything, but he got three tough yards, and that's going to make it about third and five. John D'Antonio, number 84, they've talked about so much. The Kentucky coaches think he's such a great defensive end, and he put another fine hit on there along with Neil Timmons, the defensive tackle on the right side, 71. This is a big play for Kentucky. If they can get this first down now, they're going to get out in field position where they can operate. Third and seven operating from that double wing set. They give it to Randy Brooks, and he does not have enough. Brett Bond, the right end, was in there, along with Singleton, the linebacker. Another fine defensive stand. There, number 81, getting lots of congratulations from his teammates. That's Brett Bond from Ironton, Ohio, 6'2", a 2'10", junior. So Kevin Kelly will be punting from back around his own goal line. Rick Sanford stationed at the 50-yard line to receive it. Three minutes and 20 seconds to go. Quite a rush. Kevin Kelly went down. No flag. The ball is out of bounds, and they're going to spot it where? Let's see, at about the 20. Went off the side of his line. foot again, Denny. That's two of them, and I don't even remember him kicking one like that last year. That's two real bad kicks. And here comes our defense back in again with three... Now you'll see contact you can, here, Tommy, but can, the man was blocked into it. Right. Well, it just went right off the side of his foot. You could see that, that he just didn't hit it on his foot. Carolina moving their people around again. The tight end Cornette goes to the right side. That's Johnny Wright trying to get wide. Cut off well in there by Rick Hayden, the safety man who came up, along with Kelly Kirchbaum, the linebacker. Well, James Ramey hit him behind the line, slowed him up some, but old Rick Hayden really laid a tackle on him. That was terrific, Rick. There's a Kentucky man down at the 25-yard line, and we'll try to pick up the number for you. Kentucky's new trainer, Mike Ritz, is out attending to him. Let yourself go. On second down and 10 from the 25-yard line, George Rogers just barreled down to the Kentucky 12. Let's watch it again, Tommy. Well, let's don't watch it again. They're ready. I don't think we've got time to run that back. They're coming out again, and the defense is backed up again now. It's first and goal on the 12, and it was Richard Jaffe who was the injured Kentucky man, and he's out of the ball game. This is George Rogers, the fullback, who just made the big game for South Carolina, going nowhere there. Stacked up inside by Bubba Wilson, along with the nose guard who just checked in in the place of the injured Richard Jaffe. It's Chuck Jones, number 55. Jones, a 6'2", 195 sophomore from Glasgow, and all he lacks is size. Well, Chuck made a good play on his first play, and 
we really needed that because they're down there knocking on the door again. It's going to be another big test for the defense. Second and nine from the 11 now. Gary Harper has gone all the way at quarterback for Carolina, number 10. Chips his backs out of the eye. Give it inside to George Rogers again. A shoestring tackle by Jones again there with Kirch Baum and Winkle helping out. Give Ramey a little credit again because he came from his tackle and hit him and knocked him down a winding before the other guys got him. There's a good look at Gary Harper. The sophomore from Hialeah, Florida. Gary Harper's completed 7 out of 12, and he's coming up for his 13th pass, I'd have to say, right here, right now. A minute and five seconds remaining in the third period. As Harper looks over that Kentucky defense. He's still got it. The rush is on. He's got his man for two yards on him. Going into the end zone is Willie Scott, the tight end. A touchdown pass. Gary Harper from eight yards out, connected with Willie Scott. Well, it's, the fans went wild, and watch Harper take off a Kentucky man back here deep in his backfield and set up and just throw a beautiful pass to Willie Scott and it was a touchdown all the way as soon as he let it go. That comes with 57 seconds remaining in the third period. Carolina leading now 12 to 7 and there's a timeout on the field for the score. Kentucky 7, South Carolina 12. Superstyle. Let yourself go to Pizza Hut. Get more of what you go for. Your new Superstyle. It's like pizza on top of pizza. When you want your favorite pizza with a lot more topping. And I expected more, but not this much more. We'll pile it on until there's just no stopping. This pizza has style. Super style. Let yourself go to Pizza Hut. Get more of what you go for. Your new Super style. There's a special love. 14 to 7, here it is, Tommy. Here it comes. And Harper rolls out again and makes another beautiful pass. And it's a two-pointer. He threw it to his fullback, George Rogers. Right. George Rogers caught it. And Rogers has done everything else out there but take up tickets tonight. There's a good look at Big George. 14 to 7, Carolina on top. Eddie Leopard now to kick off. Kentucky has Randy Brooks and Henry Parks deep. Leopard has not given Kentucky a chance to return any so far tonight. I'd almost rather uh, Kentucky kick off to South Carolina instead of letting him kick us in that end zone and put us deep in our territory every time, right back on the 20-yard line. Maybe he's going to miss one this time. 57 seconds showing it in the third period. It's another good kick. We're going to run one back, Denny. Randy Brooks from the two. Good kick coverage. They nailed him at the 17. Little Lou Biondi was in there. He's the 5'5", 170-pounder. Little number 23, along with Gary Berger, 19. Watch him converge on it. Well, we, it's the first kickoff return that we've come back. Watch number 23 come in there. That's the number 5'5", five, five, and he's the guy that got the tackle. That's got to be quite a build, 5'5", 170 pounds. Got to be a lot of meat on that frame. And he's a defensive back, too. They say he is all muscle. Deaton calling signal. Sean Donegan in at fullback. They give instead to Freddie Williams trying to circle the right side. Stacked up well by that inspired South Carolina defense. Well, old momentum has really changed uniforms here, Tommy. Well, they had the momentum in the first quarter of the, of the first half, and it's been the same way in this third quarter. Singleton and D'Antonio, two names that we've been calling all evening, you know, that stop for South Carolina. Mike Deaton yet to throw here in the second half after going four for six. Well, he really two periods. He hadn't had any field position to throw, didn't he? Second and eight now. Throwing wide, had his man out there, Brooks, and dropped the ball. Now some of the South Carolina players claiming it was a backward pass, but of course it was not. Well, they, uh, I think they wanted to think it was a fumble too, maybe, because it was no 
question about it being forward. He threw it forward about 10 yards, and gosh, I uh, wish he could have held on to it because if he could have broken a tackle, he might have had another one of those great runs. Randy Brooks normally has exceptional hands, but could not hang on to that one. You see Greg Nord on the sidelines there. Kentucky's tight end, so they have two wideouts in. Bill Colston wide to the right side, and Felix Wilson to the left. From the double wing set. Deep to throw. He fires a bullet, and he's got his man. And it could be a first down. He got Billy Tolston. If he gives him the forward progress, I think it will be a first down. Sanford on the coverage. Here it is. He, he disguises this play well, looks to his left, throws to his right. Tolston catches it up on the... Just I can't see that yard. About the 28, 29-yard line. Now, if he gives him the full forward progress, we're going to have a first down. And they do. First down. And that's the end of the third quarter with the score of South Carolina 14 and Kentucky 7. We'll be back after these messages. Oil. Coal. Energy. You need them. Ashland Oil brings them to you. But Ashland turns these resources into something else. Jobs. For over 6,000 people in Kentucky alone. People like you. Talented, hardworking people. The heart of Kentucky's largest company. We're proud of our people because they're what make Ashland Oil a successful company. Ashland Oil, as much a part of Kentucky as the Wildcats. If you're a trucker, you want more than the best truck on the road. You want parts and service. At Worldwide Equipment, we have over $3.5 million parts inventory backed up by 100 truck servicemen. At Worldwide Equipment, we can take care of your trucking needs. Have a double clutching truck and some of gun. My diesel back truck is number one. She won you come to colors, and now I ain't for the road. My diesel back truck is number one. Hey, Jack, you got that truck on the road? 15 minutes of football remaining with South Carolina leading Kentucky 14 to 7. The Wildcats on the attack, first and 10 from their own 28. Give it to the fullback, Randy Brooks across the 30 to the 32-yard line. Randy picked up four good hard yards then, and I, I just have a feeling, Denny, they're going to be on a march. Here. Good look at some of those big Kentucky linemen. Larry Petkosik in there. He only gave Stands about 6'5", 255. Number 63 is Petkosik. Nord, number 88, is the tight end on the right side. A senior from Louisville. Felix Wilson going wide to the left now, with all three backs in tight behind Mike Deacon. Deacon to throw. He nailed his man, Felix Wilson, but the ball was tipped by a Carolina player. Let's see who it was. Felix uh, made a good pattern. He cut out to his left and then came right across the middle. Scott Wade, the right side linebacker, just barely, I think, got a finger on that ball, Tommy. And that kept it hit Felix right on the numbers. Sometimes that's the bad spot. You can see it here on this instant replay. Mike uh, fakes well and then uh, fakes his pass, disguises it, and throws it right down the middle. No, I don't believe anybody touched that I ball. They so just either. hit him on the numbers. Here's a big play. Third and seven from the 31. Deaton straight back. Firing for Billy Tolston. He's got it. And he's got a first down also. Knocked out of bounds by Rick Sanford, their All American cor uh, cornerback. Billy Tolson's really made two fine catches here for first down. Same play, sideline pass that we had just at the end of the third quarter. Now this is the very same play. He catches it well, then makes his yardage and gets that first down. Billy Tolston, who came to Kentucky, is a very highly touted quarterback. There you see him on the sidelines now beside offensive coordinator Perry Moss. Felix Wilson is wide to the left side. Scott Peterson to the right side. Eaton on the roll. He's got blockers out ahead of him. And he had his pass receiver open, Randy Brooks. It was just a little bit low, and Brooks couldn't hang on. On that play, Felix Wilson had about five yards deep, and I was hoping that he was going to fake to Randy and just throw him along one because I believe it would have been a touchdown. Tommy, we have seen Kentucky put Hill out on the flank tonight very, very little. They've run primarily from a full set in the backfield. Yes, they have. It still looks like the Dallas Cowboy set to me. You know, it, it, it I like it. I like the offense, and if they just had a chance to run it tonight, I think we'd have seen a lot more scoring. Deaton and even 50% now at six for a dozen. Second and 10 from the 45. He'll throw again. He's got room to run. Ronnie Thomas out ahead of him, and he drills the pass into Felix Wilson in Carolina territory at the 43. That was a fine play by Mike Deaton. 
he uh, rolled out, and as you said, he had a chance to run, but he stopped, picked out Felix, and just drilled it right in there. He could really hum the ball. He's one of these guys that can throw up through a car wash without getting it wet, Tommy. And look at the <laughs> heat he puts on that one. Well, I thought that was just a beautiful play, and Felix made a great catch of it. He just drilled it, as you say, right through the car wash. Colston wide to the right side. Randy Brooks, the up man, in the wishbone. That's Chris Hill cutting back, still on his feet. Good stiff arm. Hill may go. Cuts back. He's at the 10, the 5. Taken down right at the goal line. Let's see. They'll put him down at the one-yard line. A super run. A 42-yard run by Chris Hill, the Montgomery, Alabama senior. The big play of the night for Kentucky. This, this is a great run. Uh, watch this 42, 43-yard run. Chris Hill breaks a tackle. He stumbles out. He breaks two tackles. Then he goes down the field with speed and then cuts back and uses his blocker. And looks like to me he's going to get all the way in that end zone, but that guy makes a desperation tackle on him. And he stopped right on the goal line. First and goal from the one. Chris Hill, the 5'10", 183-pound senior from Montgomery, Alabama, just made a super play. And he is the night of the Kentucky fan. Deaton trying to take it in. Don't think he made it. That was a good call on that official. If you'll notice that when we said that instant replay, that ball was just the inches short of that goal line, even though Chris's headgear was over. Kentucky may have gotten a break in that department of the first half because it looked as if Randy Brooks' knee might have touched at the one on his touchdown reception, Tommy. Well, it's easy to look up from here, and that official was right on top of it, and I'll take that official's word. Second and goal from the one now. Carolina is leading 14 to 7. We have 12 minutes and 38 seconds to play in the ball game. Deaton Barkin signals, gives to Randy Brooks, touchdown Kentucky, but he doesn't have the ball. Who's got it? Brooks ran out from under the ball. Carolina players think they have it, and they think it's a touchback. We've but got now a, Kentucky got a, has got a touchdown. We've got a flag down, and we'll have to see whether it was Kentucky or South Carolina offside. So Here comes Ray Bauer, signal. Touchdown, Kentucky. Offside, South Carolina. Touchdown, Kentucky. And the Gamecock fans don't like it. We coming back with this instant replay. If Randy Brooks gets over before he fumbles, it doesn't make any difference what happens to the ball. And that's exactly what he did. He had the ball when he went over that goal line, and then after he fumbled it, it didn't make any difference. So that's anytime why it was a touchdown. The, right. Anytime that offensive player breaks the plane of the goal line, regardless what happens after that, where the ball goes, it is a touchdown. So now out of the hold of Billy Williams, freshman Tommy Griggs, number three, will try to put Kentucky up by seven. He does. And a tie. Excuse 14 me, to 14. a tie, 14 to 14. There's a timeout on the field with a score. Kentucky 14, Carolina 14. This great run with a screen pass. Freddie Williams picking up the yard, and Mike Deaton. All four of those backs of me are running neck and neck right now for the start of the game, as far as I'm concerned. There's a good look at Gary Harper, 9 for 14. Second and 6 now from the 34. Scott, the tight end to the right side. They give it inside to Spencer Clark and stacked up again. Richard Jaffe was right there. Announcers for this telecast were selected with the approval of the University of Kentucky. I think all Kentucky fans are pleased to see Richard Jaffe back in there. He, he, uh, he's, he's been one of the outstanding linemen Kentucky ever has had. And I think even compared with Art Steele and has a chance for All-American. I'm glad that he wasn't injured. There you see Richard on the nose of the football, the nose guard for Kentucky. On third and four, will Harper go to the air? They go to the double wing set. Rogers, the only man behind him. They give it to George Rogers. He's hit and drugged down at just about the 35. So, the great punter for South Carolina, Max Runnergo, will come on with 10 minutes and 54 seconds and the clock running. Number 72 made that tackle, Denny, and uh, made a great tackle for Kentucky. And I think he deserves a lot of credit. I'm sorry I don't That's have his That's Timmy Gooch, of course, who's going to play some both ways this year at defensive tackle and offensive guard. The Kentucky linemen jumped. They made contact. And let's see what this is going to be. If this is going to be a penalty, it's going to be close for a first down, and that's going to be a real tough. Now, Jaffe's claiming that the center moved the ball. If he did, well, it's going to be a five-yard penalty against South Carolina. But center, of course, can adjust the ball, Tommy, but then when they're set, he can't move it around or pick it up. But it's going to be a penalty on Kentucky. And it's going to be so close for a first down, it's going to scare you. 
Ray Bayer probably would do well to take that ball over at the sideline and see what he's going to do. He's going to take his foot, and then he's going to measure it there, which is good officiating, and he's going to take it over at that chain and see what he's got. Tommy, explain what the center can and cannot do with that football. The center can only adjust that ball once when he comes up there with it. Of course, Jaffe was claiming that he, after he adjusted, he moved it, and uh, the officials disagreed, and Jaffe did touch him. There wasn't any doubt about that Jaffe touched, touched him, and when he did that, well, it's going to be a first down. You can see him putting his foot over there, and if it is, that's a first down, and that's a real tough break for Kentucky and a real great break for Carolina. I'll have to say Ray Byer handled that very well. If he had gone ahead and marked that penalty off and then measured, he wouldn't have convinced anybody. And well, a look on Frank Percy's face is uh, worth a thousand words well, right now. That's one of those breaks that uh, you just don't want to happen to you against you, and it's a great one when it happens for you. I knew it was going to be tough and awful close for a first down if they measured. I would invite you to join many of these same stations each week for the Fran Percy Show. Check your local listings for the time in your area. John Bailey out wide to the left now. McKinney to the right side on first and 10 Carolina from the 40-yard line. Harper looking to throw. Aiming it over the middle, and again he finds his man Zion McKinney at the 45. The ball loose momentarily, but they got it back again and knocked him down at about the 48-yard line. That's another first down. looks like it's on Kentucky's 47 where they're spotting it now Denny and that's two first downs in a row on this drive it started on the 34 of course that penalty that Jaffe hitting the Florida Center really was a big material because the defense had stopped 10 13 to play in the game first and 10 from the 47 Carolina goes straight up the gut again stacked up by Kelly Kirchbaum the linebacker Greg Roberts, the defensive end, was in there. Spencer Clark got about two on the carry. Make it second and eight from the 45. We're Johnny getting, Wright is in now, excuse me, Tommy, and Clark has come out. We're getting down to where now the time is going to be a factor. We're at 9.39, and Kentucky's not going to get hold of this ball over a couple of more times in this game, so the next time they get a hold of it, they're going to have to move. Harper looking downfield again. Aiming it for Bailey. The ball's tipped in the air. Kentucky should come up with the interception, and they do. Greg Motley, the monster man, has it, and he returns it to the 31. Greg Motley has come up with a couple of big plays in this game for Kentucky, the sophomore. Greg Motley certainly has, and I think it was Rick Hayden that tipped that ball, wasn't it, originally? Rick taped it, and that's when you say bingo, and when you say bingo, man, they go for that ball. He, uh, Rick just did a fine job coming up there hitting that ball, and now watch Greg intercept that number 31. Three Kentucky players could have intercepted that ball. Well, you know, sometimes that's bad because they can all start fighting it over like outfielders going after a fly ball. 9-17 remaining. Kentucky's ball at their own 31. Randy Brooks off left tackle. He got a couple of precious yards. Let's talk about that interior line again and the job they have done. You see 74 there, Ronnie Thomas from Kent, Ohio. 6'1", 227, a junior. And at the same time, let's remind you about the big one coming up next week. Kentucky against the Baylor Bears at 10.30 on a delay basis. Second and eight now. Chris Hill on the carry. Nothing there for him. Kentucky's still trying to outguess that defense, and with them slanting, uh, and they're slanting to the strong side of the field, the wide side of the field, and they're trying to come back against it, but they just didn't get the block that they needed to spring Chris Look, That was almost the same run that he made for the touchdown, or close to the touchdown down to the one-inch line. An important possession play now for Kentucky on third and seven. I can certainly see what Perry Moss says about 48 different sets on that defense. Big play, Mike Deaton. No setbacks behind Deaton now. Everybody out wide. Over the middle, he's got Brooks. Tries to stiff arm his way and can't do it. Well short of the first down. Well, that was a good call. You had to, the South Carolina had to think that Kentucky was going to pass and they dropped back deep and they were trying to take these linebackers deep and they ran Brooks right underneath. And if Randy had gotten past this one tackler who made a great job of coming up 
and slowing him up where the other lineman could come back and get him. Here's the kick by Kevin Kelly. Fair catch called at the 32 by Sanford, and that's where South Carolina will go on the attack. They have seven and a half minutes to try to put points on the board and put themselves ahead. There you see big defensive tackle Neil Timmons of South Carolina talking on the phone. Sanford coming off, leading the South Carolina defense off. Well, now this is going to be a big test for the defense again. They played out on that field, that hot field, where it was almost 100 degrees when the game started, and they've been on the field twice as much time as the offensive team has, and it's going to be a big test for them. Let's hope they've got enough to hold on and stop Carolina before they can get a first down. That's Johnny Wright trying the middle. Some pretty good room in there as the center of that uh, Carolina line moved Kentucky off the ball well. Danny Clancy, the center, 6'2", 250-pound senior. It looked like Oxen he, Hill, Maryland made a good block. Looked like he was going to be stopped, Denny, back there for no gain, and he just kept moving and moving. That was a Freddie Williams run. Got five yards, almost six, second and four. Willie Scott in at tight end. There's Runniger, their fine putter, loosening up on the sideline in case he has to boom another one. Try to set Kentucky back deep in their own territory. It's Johnny Wright again. Hit the line of scrimmage and diving forward again for a couple of more. Jimmy Kovach and Kelly Kirchbaum, Kelly, the Kentucky linebackers, doing a good job. Kelly Kirchbaum got a fine tackle, and he hit hard, and he went down when Kelly hit him. It's third and one now. Barnett in at tight end, and Bailey comes out. Gary Harper, nine for 15 so far. I doubt that he'll be throwing here on third and one. Let's hope he doesn't pull a Bart star. You know, that's one of Bart's favorite plays when you're deep like that to throw a long pass. You never know. They switch out of the eye. He's got everybody in tight. He gives it to Johnny Wright, trying to get outside, and he does. Venus Mutes, the only man to clean it, and finally, Larry Carter had to come out of nowhere to knock him down. But a big push down for South Carolina, and they're getting within field goal range of their sophomore sidewinder, Eddie Leppard. It's a great run. This is one of those outside plays. I think Kentucky's defense was expecting him to hit up the middle, and they made a fine pitch out, and he made a fine, fine run. Larry Carter came over and maybe have saved the touchdown. Although Motley might have been able to pick him up. Six minutes remaining now in the ball game. Carolina 14, Kentucky 14. First and 10 from the 34. Steve Dorsey, the fullback, up the middle for two. You see Bobby Wink over the offensive tackle getting off the stack there along with Lester Boyd, the linebacker. But then you're so right about the field goal range. If they get another first down, they're definitely within field goal range. I think if Kentucky can hold them here, uh, even though they may try it, I don't think they can make it from that far. Carolina trying to keep fresh troops in there. They just sent the big fullback, George Rogers, back in for Dorsey. Their field goal kicker, Eddie Leppard, by the way, once kicked a 52-yard field goal in high school. Straight up the middle, Al Harper kept it himself, though and dives forward for a couple before Lester Boyd and Bud Deal brought him down. Kelly Kirschbaum is right in there, too. Spencer Clark in now, and Johnny Wright out. Four minutes and 52 seconds for many. Well, you talk about big downs. You know, we had one other big down in the game, but I'd have to say this is the biggest down of the football game. Third and Kentucky three. can stop them here while they're going to have to try for a field goal or kick them deep. And this has got to be almost a passing down. And even I don't even expect them to run it wide. I think it's got to be a pass. Everybody's in tight. And Spencer Clark trying to get outside. And the play was just diagnosed beautifully by Kentucky. Well, I'm glad he didn't pass because I'm glad he ran right there because it was a bad call. Bobby Henry... Winkle and Greg Motley were all over him. And so was Craig Roberts. I bet Jim Carlin doesn't like that call at all. Here comes Eddie Leppard, their field goal kicker. Kentucky was right there, and gosh, uh, they, they stacked it up, and they hit him back there, and of course he fumbled the ball, but his forward progress was stopped, and that fumble doesn't make any difference. The big play there made by number 91, Craig Roberts, the senior defensive end from Camp Hill, Pennsylvania. It's going to be a 37-yard field goal attempt, Benny. It's got plenty of length. It's no good. He missed it to the left. 
that's pretty far to be kicking them. When you get around 37 or 40, you got to be pretty daggone lucky. Not many in the pros can kick them that good. Time out on the field, and we'll return now to our studios for this message. Deaton passed incomplete, intended for Billy Tolston. Here comes the replay. Now you can see that Tolston had a chance to catch this. Deaton had a couple of receivers he's looking for. Takes his time and hits Tolston. A little bit high, but it was a pass that could be caught. And boy, watch this guy hit him after he met ball goes back. Back live, second and ten. Deaton on the roll. He's got blockers out ahead of him. Throwing long, and he's got his man Chris Hill at the 47-yard line. Beautiful pass that time. Now, you fans may notice that the ball came out to the 26. That's a new college rule this year. Instead of coming back to the 20 after a missed field goal, Kentucky started on its own 26. Watch Deaton drill this ball in there. And watch this catch. I've got to say, Chris Hill has made two of the big plays in the game. He's got very quick hands. You've got to see him play table tennis, Tommy. He can really make it talk. Well, he's making that football talk tonight on those pass receptions that he's made in that beautiful run. Again, from that trip set. Deaton on the roll, the heat is on, and he's got his man Felix Wilson on the screen. Good block from Tommy Kearns, and Felix got it down to the 42-yard line of Carolina. I want to say this, you know, that was a great run by Felix, good catch, but Mike disguised that play so well there. A lot of poise on you, Mike Deaton. Disguised it so well, and got Florida rushing, and he just laid it off of that screen pass, and that's great football. Fred Sinclair had a great rush on, but uh, Deaton didn't panic at all, Tommy. First and 10 Wildcats now. They've spotted it at the 41-yard line. Two minutes and 43 seconds remaining. Up the middle with Randy Brooks. They'll give him forward progress, I believe, inside the 40. Well, now, that, would have been, that was a good call. The South Carolina man made a good tackle on that play and diagnosed it. But with Kentucky throwing and just time running out, you've got to run that ball every once in a while. So all you fans that want him to pass on every play, you just can't do that. A gain of one, make it second and nine. Two minutes and 16 seconds of the clock running. 11 for 18 in Mike Deaton's varsity debut as a starting quarterback. He was nine for 27 in limited action last year. Again from that double wing. Throwing and he has his man again, Felix Wilson. Another beautiful pass by Mike Deaton. Gosh, he had to hold on to that ball to the last second because Felix was under cover and he threw it just when he broke open. There goes Greg Nord off to the sideline. They stopped the clock for the first down, but the clock running again, Denny. We're down in the last two minutes at 151 now. A Kentucky first down, the ball on the 28. Intercepted by reserve defensive end Roger Woolbright, and he's never made a bigger play for Carolina. Now the Gamecocks will come the other way. Mike's coming out here, and it looks like he has his man open, but the man from South Carolina just stepped right in there, and that's a great play by South Carolina. That's his only interception tonight, isn't it? Yes, sir. 137 to play in the game. The ball on the 26th. Carolina would have to go 74 yards for a touchdown, much less than that to get in field goal range for Eddie Leppard to win it. Harper to throw. Sacked behind the line of scrimmage. James Ramey had a great rush on, and then he got help from Bobby Winkle and from uh, Craig Roberts. clock running now on second and 17. Harper going upstairs again. He's got Zion McKinney. He goes out of bounds at the 24 or 25. Let's see where they spot it. It'll be at the 24. It'll be a gain of a buck. 
Now, this is a great big play. Kentucky's got a chance to get the ball back if they have to punt and still get in field goal range. But they've got to stop them on this play, and it's got to be a pass play. It's third down, 11. Everybody in the stadium, including you and I, Denny, know this has got to be a pass play. Rick Hayden playing center field for Kentucky number 16, roving back there. He knows what's coming. Instead, they go for the draw play up the middle. Not enough for the first down. Well, that again, you know, I think is a bad call because they didn't have much chance with 12 yards to go. Even though they break the draw for a pretty good game, they're just not going to make it if Kentucky has any defense at all. And you see the clock, 50 seconds and ticking. Now, this might be a good time for Kentucky to take time out if they're going to sit there and hold the ball and not kick it, and that looks like what they're planning on doing. They're going to run that clock down pretty far. They're going to take the penalty in it. They There's ran it all the way in. down, and they ran uh, about 20 seconds off that clock. That's twice they've done that. We're tied at 14 points apiece. If you're just joining us, Kentucky scored on a 43-yard pass from Mike Deaton to Randy Brooks, and on a one-yard plunge by Brooks, a score set up on a sensational 42-yard run by Chris Hill. Now Runniger to punt. Another good one. Larry Carter to field it at the 34. He just put his head down and uh, dove across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Well, we've only got 21 seconds now. Denny, and uh, it almost have to be a miracle for Kentucky to get on the board, but uh, miracles do happen. I've seen them happen in five seconds, and I'm sure a lot of you fans are hoping that a miracle will come true, but that's almost what it's got to be. Florida knows Kentucky's going to have to be passing to get in field goal range, and so they've got a three-man front is all they've got. 21 seconds on the clock. Eaton with a quick look in. Missed his man, intended for Freddie Williams, and I don't think Freddie was quite expecting it. He never looked up for it. I don't think he expected it to come to him that quick, but that looks like what the play was designed to do. It's just a quick look-in pass. Wouldn't it be something, Tommy, if Kentucky could somehow get within field goal range and give the freshman the walk-on? Tommy Griggs, whose dad, John Griggs, played at Kentucky in the early 50s, wouldn't it be something if they could give him a chance to win it? I thought he was going to do it just a minute ago before that interception there on the last series of downs. Second 10 with 18 seconds remaining, and Deaton going to the air again. Plenty of time. Pinned it down there for Felix Wilson and incomplete. Well, we're down to 12 seconds, and it's third down for Kentucky, and it's just one of those things that I said before, that we need almost a miracle for this game not to end up in attack. I want to say this for both the Kentucky offense and defense. I think they both look good. We've had a lot of circumstances tonight where the offense hadn't had a chance to they move the ball. In fact, they've had to come 99 and 84 yards for their touchdown. The defense has played well, but you've got to give a lot of credit to that South Carolina football team. Here's the big play now. Deaton has got to find somebody. He's got him. Felix Wilson tackled inside the uh, South Carolina territory at about the 48 with four seconds showing on the clock. And Mike Deaton came running down the field all the way to call timeout, and all he has to do is just turn right around to that referee, and that's just uh, one of those things that he'll pick up, though, and he would have saved himself maybe two or three seconds, but it's just four seconds to go. You don't have to run all the way down the field where the guys tackle to get that timeout. Kentucky with two timeouts left, but it won't do them any good, Tommy. No, it looks like he's gonna have to hit, we're going to have to score. Uh, I think if you complete a pass, stay down to the 20-yard line, the clock will run out on you, and you wouldn't get a chance for a field goal. There's Mike Deaton trying to rally his troops around him. Be sure and catch Kersey's Big Blue Line on a radio station in your area, Wednesdays at 7 o'clock. Call 254-5559 to talk to the coach. Right there, Fran Kersey. Well, I know some of the fans are disappointed that uh, Ty Game Bear Bryant sometimes says that's like kissing your sister, but I think that it's been kind of a victory for both teams tonight. South Carolina's got a fine football team, and they're going to have a good record this year. And I think Kentucky has shown that they're going to have another great football team this year. Kentucky, of course, 10-1 last year. Perhaps the last play of the game. The clock running out on that pass. Intercepted. Here he comes. Ridden out of bounds. Game. Robert Perlote went out of bounds, and that's the ball game. Carolina 14, 
and Kentucky 14 will return after this. 